Right. <clears throat> well, hello, my kako pakahia pao. My name is Kia Loa Mossman, and I will be presenting my research on Honua Ya Kea, incorporating kapu and kana wai into Hawaii planning through grounded theory and ancestral ecological knowledge systems. Before I begin, I just want to mahalo my committee members, Professors McKenna Kaufman, Professor Luciano Minerbi, and Professor Daviana McGregor. So land use in Hawaii has drastically shifted since the time of sovereignty. And though many benefit from the amenities of development, such as hotels in our coastal areas and telescopes on, in, on our conservation lands, these developments have led to an imbalance in uh, recipro ecosystem reciprocity. This imbalance has led to major issues such as sea level rise in our populated coastal areas, our coral reefs being impacted by a variety of uh, post-contact land use practices, and the 30 meter telescope remaining a major point of contention as it's slated to be built uh, in one of the most protected conservation areas and one of the most sacred mountains to the people of Hawaii, uh, Mauna Kea. These issues can be informed by ind indigenous knowledge and holistic planning practices. Holistic planning practices such as Honua Iakea. So what is Honua Iakea? Well, if we look back into our ka'au, Honua Iakea is the wa'a that brought Pele and her family over to Hawaii from Kahiki. Now, like that wa'a, the Honua Iakea process is a collective process that carries the community to a better understanding of their environment. <clears throat> Essentially, it's a community planning framework that uses Oli Mele and Ka'au uh, to create decisions that focuses on our environment and ecosystem. This process uses ancestral ecological knowledge to translate and analyze Oli Mele and Ka'au. And using a grounded theory framework, this process becomes a collective decision-making process. To create well-informed and equitable policies for all of Hawaii's communities and their environment, Honua Kea needs to be included in Hawaii's planning process. So the objectives of this paper is to incorporate indigenous knowledge and in collections into Hawaii planning um, through ancestral ecological knowledge systems that are put into a grounded theory framework. By doing this, we essentially combine a, an indigenous knowledge framework with a Western um, theory framework to create the best decisions for our environment. The second objective of this paper is to incorporate Honua Yakea into our permitting uh, processes through the CDUP and the SMA permits and to incorporate it into our community land use decisions through the CDP or the community development plans. The significance of this research is that it bridges relationships between communities and decision makers by creating a collective process in which everyone is drive, driven to reach the same goal of creating better protections and um, better positions for our ecosystem to be in for the future. These, um, this, this process also uses Oli, Mele, and Ka'au, which, uh, which present guidelines and laws for us to follow that were written over centuries of environmental observation by our Kanaka Maoli ancestors. <clears throat> so the Kahua of Honua Iakea, or the foundations of Honua Iakea is as follows. Ancestral ecological knowledge systems put into a grounded theory framework to produce kapu and kanawe. A kapu are defined as the elements in nature that are held sacred to us. And not just sacred in the abstract form, but sacred in that these are elements in nature that are important for overall ecosystem health. Water, fresh water, 
clean air, sunlight, these are things that we all know are important for overall ecosystem health. These elements in nature, if removed, cannot be replaced. Take our Mauna, for instance. Mauna Kea is considered coupled because of its service as a water collector and a storm breaker. If you remove or impact Mauna Kea in such a way that it cannot produce, uh, that it cannot fulfill its responsibilities, then we lose that resource as a water container. We lose that resource as a storm breaker. The picture below shows the Pele. Now the Pele is coupled because of its duty to create land. Now, if you impede that ability in any way, you take away that resource, which is crucial for, the island, for our island ecosystem. Kanavai are the regulations that maintain the sacredness of the couple. Essentially, they're the guidelines that guide our interaction, human interaction with nature. Uh, if we look to the chant on the right here, Kukulu Kapahu is a uh, oli created for Pele's Kanavai. Now in this oli, Pele is considered the kapu, she is considered the sacredness. Now to maintain this sacredness, we have the Kua'a Kanavai or the burning back, the law of the burning back, which states that we are not allowed to impede Pele in any way, go into her territory while she is flowing. Um, and we are not, as humans, not allowed to interact with Pele during this time. The Kaio Kia Kanawai, which is the law of the boundaries, she creates the boundaries. No one else creates the boundaries for her. So no one can go into um, this area during the time of her, her activity. And lastly is the Kiho Iho I Kanawai, which tells us when we're able to go back into, into her areas. Uh, as we previously stated, kua'a kai'o kia means that she is kapu and no one can touch her. The ki ho'i ho'i kanavai tells us when that kapu ends. is when the first growth or the new generation of growth grows in, in that lava field and we're able to return. Ancestral ecological knowledge systems, a lot like traditional ecological knowledge, are, is knowledge of one's surrounding environment passed down through ancestors of the indigenous people of a given place. The way that ancestral ecological knowledge differs from traditional ecological knowledge is that ancestral ecological knowledge uses mele, oli, and ka'au as its basis. And in order to use mele, and oli, mele, oli, and ka'au as its base, in ancestral ecological knowledge needs to incorporate kilo and makovalu. Uh, Kilo and Makavalu are methods that were introduced as a part of the Papaku Makavalu method that was introduced in 2006. Um, and it states that Kilo is the observations of one's place made over time through family lineage or practice. Now, if we look at the chant above, that chant could not have been composed without Kilo. The author had needed to understand the, um, his or her environment in order to compose that chant. If we look at the picture on the bottom here, it's a picture of my siblings, Luca and Lanihuli. Uh, they are both practiced Kilo. Luca is practiced in uh, Lavaita and Lanihuli in Hula. Uh, but because they are practiced Kilo, they are able to understand their environment in ways that um, normal people can. Makavalu is a method of analysis used to understand the true meaning of indigenous knowledge devices. So if we look back again at this Oli, it, if we look at it literally, it kind of looks like it's talking about someone traveling uh, along the southeast side of, uh, of Hawaii Island. But when we apply Makavalu, when uh, practitioners use Makavalu on this Oli, they're able to see that this only actually talks about the movement of Pele from Ka'u to Puna, that's her boundaries. Uh, it talks about where she last erupted at Pu'ulana, and it talks about how this is all being seen from Kukala Ula. And only by using Makavalu can you understand that this chant is actually talking about Pele. So, by itself is Ancestral ecological knowledge systems are great for understanding the knowledge and 
devices left behind to us by our kupuna. However, it is not a collective decision-making process. To do that, we have to take ancestral ecological knowledge systems and incorporate it into the grounded theory. Uh, grounded theory is a method of analysis used to draw theories and core categories to, um, from uninterpreted data. And this is done through a combination of open and selective coding, as well as constant comparison analysis. Now this may seem convoluted at first and may seem like it doesn't connect at all. But if we take the ancestral ecological knowledge systems and incorporate it into the grounded theory framework, we can replace some of those terms. So now our core category becomes our kapu and kanabai. Our open and selective coding becomes our kilo and makabalu. And by doing this, this grounded theory method now becomes uh, supported and transformed into a knowledge system, a collective decision-making process based on non, uh, indigenous knowledge systems. So now we get to the Honua Iakea process, um, where we incorporate these ideas of ancestral ecological knowledge systems and grounded theory to create kafu and kanavai. Now there are three parts to the Honua Iakea process the pre-session, the session, and the formulation of the kapu and kanawai. Now in the pre-session, um, this occurs before any, any participants are convened. And it, the first, the three steps um, of the pre-session is to determine a general topic, gather, gather relevant source material, and convene the group. And the first step is extremely important, determining the general topic. Without determining a general topic, you have no direction for the next steps or for the following steps. So to determine a general topic, facilitators and conveners will meet with organizations and agencies that want to conduct the Honua Yakea session. And they will come up with a general topic for um, the process to follow. A uh, general topic is typically based on a place or a practice. Um, you'll see later on in, in the case studies presented that um, the first case study is based on a place and the second case study is based on a practice. Now, after the general topic is decided, facilitators and conveners will gather relevant source material. Now the relevant source material is these pictures up here and uh, at the top, one is an oli and one is a ka'au. These, the relevant source material um, would have to be relevant or need to um, relate to the general topic. Um, and yeah, is the relevant source material is the oli, mele, and ka'au that are used to gather um, kapu and kanabai. So after the relevant source material has been gathered, um, agencies will meet again with facilitators and conveners to decide uh, who exactly uh, is gonna participate in these sessions. Uh, participants are typically those who have kilo experience and understand the basics of makabalu. Uh, this helps the process move forward. So after the pre-session um, and the participants are decided and gathered and um, meetings are held, uh, the session can begin. Uh, in the session, uh, the session consists of orientation, individual translation and analysis, small group discussion, and large group discussion and synthesis of ideas. So for the orientation, participants will be oriented on um, everything to do with the Honua process. So 
there will, there will be a reminder of what Kilo and Makavalu are and how to do those processes. Uh, there will be a discussion on what Kapu and Kanawai are and the goal of finding those in the Oli. And uh, facilitators will orient participants on how the Honua Yakea process will go so that everybody understands how we will be moving forward um, during that time. Uh, after the orientation, um, individuals are given an oli and they all break off into um, their separate zones and begin to translate and analyze the oli, mele, or ka'au individually. Now this is done through their own perspective or their own kilo experience um, so that we are able to see that kind of information coming, uh, coming out. Uh, during this, during the individual translations and analysis is when, if note takers and translators are available, this is when they would assist um, the participants to both translate the chants literally and to take down notes on any ideas that come across their mind. Uh, after the individuals translate and analyze the Oli, Mele, and Ka'au, um, they will either come back to the collective and share their findings before breaking out into small groups or just break straight out into small groups depending on the time allotted. Now, the small group discussions are where participants will discuss um, their find individual findings with each other and then begin the process of translating the Oli Mele or Ka'au line by line. Um, after this is done, uh, the Oli Mele and Ka'a, the findings of the small group are then shared with the collective and facilitators con and conveners are able to ask pointed questions to draw out Kapu and Kanawai from their findings. Some of those questions are listed here on, on the left. So like what, it, what is the order and why, what major Akua, uh, what are the boundaries and is there a ceremony or ceremonies? So the formulation of Kapu and Kanawai comes after all these um, things are drawn out from the small group findings. So if we look here, this image depicts um, a how the process runs from going to a small group findings, translating the chant line by line, to answering the questions meant to draw out Kapu and Kanavai, to drawing out the Kapu and Kanavai for that specific Oli. This process is repeated over and over again for each Oli and Ka'au. And all that information of Kapu and Kanavai are condensed into one document that looks kind of like this. That's easy to read and clearly lays out important valuable resources and how to regulate them. The ones that you see circled here are directly related to the Kanawai, Kapu and Kanawai that were created in this example. So to better understand this process, uh, I present two case studies as previously mentioned. Um, the first case study involves Oha and Mauna Kea during the TMT controversy in 2016. And here is a picture of the astronomy precinct as well as the project area of TMT. Um, the second case involves Hui Malamalokoi'a who is housed under Kua Aina Ulu Awamo and these are the local uh, that are a part of that hui. So the Mauna Kea case began in 2016 when OHA contracted the Edith Kanakole Foundation to create land management guidelines for the state government uh, after OHA accused the state government of uh, poor land management practices. EKF members wanted to take this, uh, being that this was such a serious case, wanted to implore a different type of method than they were used to. 
So they began by gathering 18 holy of, uh, of the Hulihia, Hulia, and Ko'ihonua style. And they also went about gathering 55 participants across the Pai Aina to participate in creating these new land management guidelines for the state. Um, these, uh, this Honuaya Kea session was held three different sessions, um, two in Hilo and one in Oahu. And each participant um, then began to go through the process of Honua Iakia. They were oriented on what the goal was and how to accomplish that goal. They then began individually translating and uh, interpreting these oli uh, using their own perspective. Uh, in this case, translators and note takers were provided to participants. After they uh, Translated it. Translated the Oli and Mele individ or Oli individually. They came back to the collective to share their findings before breaking up into small groups. In their small groups, they discussed and translated the chants line by line. And after um, gathering all that information, they shared the, each small group shared their findings with the collective. From there, facilitators asked the collective pointed questions to draw kapu and kanavai from these oli. The kapu and kanavai that were drawn out from this oli are presented here in, um, on the right, or a full list of it is presented in the Kihoi Hoi Kanavai Restoring Kanavai to Island Stewardship document uh, located online. This document has been offered up for legal battles, such as the TMT case, to protect and manage natural, uh, important natural resources, and has the uh, potential to guide land use uh, management uh, in conservation zones and other areas such as Mauna Kea. The Hui Malama Lokoi'a case um, began, or began in 2019, and it is when Hui Malama Lokoi'a um, Ko'o Kia'i, uh, or some of their head practitioners, were convening for a meeting to discuss some of their needs and opportunities. Um, Hua, at this time, decided that it was a good idea to engage in the Honua'a Kia process to better understand what the needs were for the practice of lokoi'a uh, in the eyes of Kanaka Maoli who came before us. So EKF members gathered um, oli and ka'ao um, instead of just oli. So the ka'ao that they use is puniakai'a and the oli that was used were um, about Kanaloa who has a lot to do with lokoi'a work. Um, and this was the first time that the Honua Kia process used Ka'au as a source of uh, knowledge in this process. Uh, the session was held at Mokuolo'e in Ko'olaupoko and about 20 participants came, um, participated and again per, um, engaged in the Honua Kia process. They translated their only Oli and Ka'au individually, and uh, note takers and translators on in this session were not provided. Um, so it was really up to facilitators and as well as participants to make sure all ideas were written down. Um, they then broke instead of going coming back to the collective, participants went straight into small groups, uh, shared their individual findings and began translating the Oli line by line, Oli and Ka'ao line by line. Um, after this was done, uh, the facilitators then asked pointed questions to draw out Kapu and Kana Uh This process was repeated for each Oli and each device that was used. 
and the resulting document was the one that is here on the left. Um, this was used to inform the local a needs assessment that was written by the Hui Malama local Ia this year and has future implications for human interaction in coastal in coastal areas um, which could benefit uh, the practice of local Ia. So the implications of Hawaii planning um, if Honua is used in, in Hawaii planning, it could have major implications for the permitting process, uh, specifically the CDUA or conservation district use applications and the special management area applications, and could have major implications for the community development plans. So the CDUA or CDUP um, are permits that identify the impacts of use or development in conservation zones. This is um, housed under DLNR and um, typically does not require, or this process does not require a um, community hearing process unless specified by DLNR. The special management areas are um, special management areas are areas designated for special management and protection under the coastal zone management program, um, and essentially, CDUAs protect um, conservation zones, and SMAs uh, protect coastal zones. Now, uh, if Honua process is introduced into the into these permitting applications, then it would force developers and project managers to identify natural elements as kapu is a clear way of understanding what are those valuable natural elements. And it also forces developers to follow the kana way in order to protect and honor those valuable elements. If not, they're subject to, um, to lawsuit. By incorporating the Honua Ia Kea into the CDUA, this could have major implications for Mauna Kea. And by incorporating it into the SMA uh, applications, it could have major implications for local EL management. <clears throat> Community the community development plans are uh, are a way for um, communities to address their local and regional issues and opportunities. This is a, a plan that is under the general plan, meaning it is done in conjunction with the general plan and um, it's done to protect cultural and natural resource, to encourage watershed planning, and to regulate growth within community and um, regional areas. The implications of putting Honua Yakea into this process is that it allows communities to have a better understanding of the indigenous knowledge created for their areas, specifically for their areas. Uh, it also uh, is a collective process that aids in the CDP goals of protecting cultural and natural resources, resources of watershed planning and regulating growth. This process, the Honua Kea process could also aid in the creation of SMAs and conservation areas as uh, Honua Iakea shows what elements in nature are valuable and need protection. The last um, way that Honua Iakea could aid in the CDPs is to create more collaborative community meetings. Instead of um, having the community meetings be used for arguments and uh, to get out frustration, it can be used for a collaborative opportunity to push our decisions forward for the betterment of our natural ecosystems. 
Uh, one example of where Honua Yakea can be immediately effective is the Hamakua CDP. The Hamakua CDP covers the Mauna Kea summit and summit, uh, near summit areas, but this document, this Hamakua CDP could be informed by the Kihoiho Ikanawai document, as the Kihoiho Ikanawai document lists natural elements that are important for that area um, and how to manage it. The Honuea Kea process also adheres to the objectives of of the CD of the Hamakua, Hamakua CDP, uh, as the objectives of the Hamakua CDP is to pro project, restore, and enhance watershed ecosystems, sweeping views, and open spaces from Mauna Kea Forest to Makai shoreline, and protecting and nurturing Hamakua's social and cultural diversity, including sacred places and historical sites. In conclusion, Honua Iakea should be incorporated into Hawaii's planning process um, because it, not only for the betterment of our communities, but for the betterment of our overall ecosystem. Uh, ancestral ecolog ecological knowledge systems and the grounded theory framework provide us with a, a holistic decision-making process that can be pushed forward into the future and that help serve communities and our environment. The Kapu and Kanavai help guide human interactions with our natural elements by influencing our permitting, by influencing our zoning, by influencing our community planning. Um, so with all these negative impacts in Hawaii's, um, in Hawaii's ecosystem, Honolulu Kea is a is crucial for protecting the valuable resources that we have left. So it is not a question of if it's possible to use this process. It's a question of how quickly can this indigenous knowledge tool be incorporated into our planning processes today to better manage Hawaii's environment into the future. Mahalo Nui Kako for listening. I just wanted to um, mahalo my committee, uh, my chair, Professor McKenna Kaufman, and my committee members, Professors Daviana McGregor and Professor Luciano Minerbi. Uh, I want to also mahalo my ohana, Dr. Hui Hui Kanahele Masman and Auntie Kekui Kelly Kanakole O Haile Lani, uh, who are both credited for creating this process. I want to mahalo my grandma, Pua Lani Kanahele, who uh, is our rock and is the source of our ancestral knowledge in our family. I want to mahalo all the kumu who have brought, uh, helped me out to this point in my life. Uh, Ashok, Suwan, Peter, Dachong, Yunath, and Smoke, uh, Mehana, Kumbalia, Kamu, mahalo all you, all you guys. Uh, I also want to Mahalo the uh, different organizations that have helped me out to this point. Uh, Oha Kua and Hui Malamalo Kuiya for being a part of the Honua Yakea process and EKF for giving me every resource that I could possibly need to get this done. Mahalo Nui. <laughs>